For now, we are going to show you the changing fortunes of South Korean villages, how they were underdeveloped earlier in ancient times, and how they became the modern villages. The story of the villages of South Korea could well be the tale of how an ancient society should march into modernity. A saga of how age-old traditions and professions can survive and be kept intact through centuries. In an economy that ranks among one of the most industrialized in the world, agriculture employs 7% of the workforce in South Korea. But agriculture methods here have been totally adopted to suit modern living conditions. Rajya Sabha TV tried to understand how these South Korean villages retain their identity under the relentless spread of the most advanced industrial infrastructure. Our visit to a South Korean village was part of an effort to understand Korean society in totality. Even as well-laid roads welcome you into the beautiful villages of Korea, the people here and the smell of the soil give you a sense of rustic earthiness. South Korean villages exemplify how modernity can coexist in a rural environment. They also convey how life in villages can remain significant, comfortable and relevant. We travelled from Seoul to meet some of the sons and daughters of the soil of South Korea. The exciting trip to Hyong, a village far away from the towns, had any number of signages. Urban facilities in rural areas like these are probably what former Indian President APJ Abdul Kalam envisaged for Indian villages. And this is perhaps how his dream could be fulfilled. The village we are visiting is not small. It has scattered houses with modern facilities like sophisticated solar water heaters. While a few houses retain a traditional look, many are made of concrete, equipped with modern implements. They are surrounded by patches that have all kinds of leafy vegetables from chili to cabbage and others. We chance upon a farmer seeding garlic in a field. Interestingly, it resembles exactly how we do it in India. We don't know Korean language and she does not know English. But anyway, let's use our wits to try and connect. Here is a Korean farmer and she is growing garlic. She is putting the seeds of garlic inside this soil. Hello ma'am, what are you growing? Hello. Hello, what is this? What is this? Uh, what is this? Yum yum. Yum yum. So uh, she is telling that this is uh, yum yum. It is language, uh, their, their language, Korean language that is called Lasun. And uh, though she doesn't understand English, but what uh, we have talked about, she told that this is something very delicious for eating. And indeed, garlic is very delicious. And we use in our food, and she also uses in our food. In our brief conversation, she says that whatever she is growing, yum yum. Um, yum. will flavor the food she will cook and make it yummy. Moving further ahead, we spot many greenhouses. Greenhouse technology is an ideal fit for farmers in South Korea, which allows them to use their own labor and equipment. Since labor is scarce, these greenhouses are in varying stages of plantation. Some are ready with flowering plants, while others are waiting to be seeded with the next crop. Extreme weather is the biggest reason for widespread use of greenhouses here. The summers are hot and winters bone-chilling cold. Greenhouses are technology equipped to combat the adverse impact of this wide range of weather conditions. Moving around in the village, we are all the time trying to find common ground with the villages in India. Obviously, the rural setting is similar, houses built in the middle of open spaces surrounded by plants and fields. 
Next, we reach the house of another farmer. Mr. Su Yong Hong owns a good-sized tract of land in which he grows vegetables and fruits. He may be old but manages all the farming work himself. Modern equipment and tractors are his strength. He drives the tractor himself and does not hesitate to say how much he loves his profession. Mr. Sin's house is as modern as they come with modern architecture that suits the requirement of a village. I grow rice, sesame, leaf, pepper and some vegetables. I have been enjoying farming here for a long time. Sun Yong Kong grows paddy, leafy vegetables, pepper and fruits on his farm. He speaks very good Korean, which for a known Korean like us is not possible to understand. So we take the help of our friend Zena. Mr. Sun says he is happy that last year's typhoon did not damage his crops much. Farming is his passion and he loves to do it all by himself. His two sons don't live with him as they work in Seoul. My children live in big cities, but my wife and I live here. I am very happy to be a farmer. This year is lucky for me because despite the typhoon, my crop did not suffer much. Mr. Sun and his wife are not the only ones living in the village while their children are living elsewhere. Many like them are managing with relative ease. He says agriculture cooperatives take care of his produce and he does not have to worry about being paid. People here sell their agricultural produce to the local cooperative, especially rice crop, as it is very common crop. In my case, I do not have very large rice cultivation, so that cooperative people come and buy my products directly. Mr. Sun says the agriculture cooperatives buy his products, sells them in the market and pay him on time. There is neither discrimination nor delay. I am completely happy and satisfied with the work of local agricultural cooperatives. People are getting loan from local cooperative society easily. Everyone gets payment for their goods on time. Mr. Sun is happy to welcome us in his village, especially to his house. He shows me his Korean pear tree. It is a bit surprising to see the pear wrapped in envelopes. Mr. Sun plucks one as a gift for me with the envelope. While Mr. Sun's innovativeness and enterprise is truly amazing, we heard that one of the reasons that contributes to the ease with which he does his farming is the cooperative society, which of course makes us eager to see for ourselves South Korea's cooperatives. Agriculture in South Korea was also quite underdeveloped. There was lack of funds and also lack of enthusiasm among the farmers and in between the cooperative movement entered into South Korean agriculture and it changed the whole agriculture scenario in the country and now we are standing before the headquarters of South Korean Agriculture Cooperative Federation and we will show you how it changed the whole agriculture practice in South Korea. The cooperative structure in South Korea is truly marvelous. We got a glimpse of its operation when we went to the office. What we witnessed was a general meeting of the cooperative society. It was huge but very structured. The meeting was taking place as if it were an orderly corporate, but in its functioning, extremely democratic, with farmers reviewing farm practices and suggesting ways to streamline collection, payment and distribution methods. The interest rate for depositors in private bank is currently 2%, but NH offers a slightly higher interest rate than private banks. As far as the interest rate on the loan is concerned, NH charges interest from 2.5% to 5% on the loan. The interest rate for taking loans is decided based on the economic condition of the farmers. Farmers who have a good credit will have to pay an interest rate of up to 2.5%. Those who do not have good credit will have to pay an interest rate of up to 5%, although it is lower than private banks. Only 22% of South Korea's total available land is arable. Two-thirds of the country is hilly or mountainous. Agriculture contributes 2.34% to its GDP. Rice is the most important crop. It accounts for 90% of the country's total grain production and over 40% of farm income. 
barley, soybeans and potatoes are other major broad acre crops. Fruits, particularly citrus and vegetables, are also widely grown. At a time when the market economy has become a rat race, the cooperatives of South Korea are a boon. The first objective of NH is to transfer agricultural technologies to farmers and second is to supply equipment for better production and to provide benefits to the farmers. NSCF has its own factories for fertilizers, pesticides and seeds. They provide good money to the farmers so that their income can be increased. NSCF role is very significant in Korea. NSCF sells in two different categories, retail market and wholesale market. If a farmer grows apples, then the supermarket buy apples directly from them. As well as supermarket sells some goods by packaging and polishing such as rice. Rice and some other items are divided into A, B, C and D categories based on its quality. Price is also decided on the basis of quality of the goods. At the huge multi-storied office of the National Agriculture Cooperative Federation known as NH in Korea, people are keen to share experiences. NSCF was established in Korea on August 15, 1961, when the country's farmers faced a shortage of equipment. The government took several steps to provide financial assistance to farmers and to supply various trade products. The purpose of establishing NH was to work for the welfare of farmers. The government helped the farmers to get the loans easily. We also met members of the top management in Seoul who take care of the day-to-day -day work of the cooperatives. They showed us a corporate film to give us an idea of the scope of their work in the villages. Korea Agricultural Cooperative Marketing requires all products undergo strict quality inspection before being sold to consumers. Our next stop was Yangye Mall. We are inside Yangye Hanaro Mart. In Indian parlance, you can say it is a big mall. What is special about this that it is owned and operated by South Korean's Farmers Cooperative Society. They sell food, vegetables, rice, sweet, and all other consumer items. Actually, because of success of uh, you know Farmers Cooperative Society in South Korea, the consumer sellers also thought to utilize this network. And now you can get everything uh, here in this mall, uh, almost 20% less uh, uh, price than outside market. So it is a success story and it is helpful both to the farmers and also to the consumers. The National Agriculture Cooperative owns this mall. Their officials took us on a tour to many sections. One of the attractions here is ginseng, an exotic Korean product that is much in demand. For us, it was an opportunity to see ginseng being marketed in such huge quantities. Various types of ginseng and roots are on display. The ginseng root resembles a reddish but is much smaller in size. It is not only marketed at the mall but also processed here. We were offered a taste of the raw ginseng root. It has an earthly taste and refreshing. Ginseng is also sold in small pouches and bottles and generally used as a drink. The way in India we, we produce saffron, in South Korea they produce ginseng. And here is the plant uh, that uh, they are producing ginseng in liquid form. They boil the roots uh, in water for a long time, around 48 hours. And when ginseng is ready, Consumers take it in bottles, packed bottles, and then they dilute it at home for, you know, consumptions. It comes into small packets also. Just you, you know, tear it and you can drink it. The ginseng farming is a delicate process. From plantation to harvest, it takes five years. These red fruits are just seeds for the next plantation. The real harvest is the root that is pulled out and processed. 
The cheerful farmers of South Korea seem to sum up the entire story of their farming that's thriving even in an industrial boom. The cooperative system in South Korea is as impressive as it is innovative. It adds value to the produce that it procures from the farmers. It also does the processing, the packaging and the selling. Like this rice that is brought raw, polished here and packaged in these packets. Doing business with NACF is good because they develop very good reliable relationship with the farmers and when unexpected situation happen, prices of the products really goes down. National Agricultural Cooperative provides stable price in that situation and our main objective is to help the farmers to purchase the agricultural products and increase the level of profit. The cooperatives also procure perishable product like fruits and vegetables. Besides the equipment to preserve them for a long time, the vegetables are kept hydrated with a spray. Farm products sold by the cooperative mall cost 20% less than the normal market. But overall, from the field to the consumer, prices don't vary more than 50%. The cooperative malls sell agricultural products at 20% less than the normal market price. This price includes distribution and delivery cost and that is why the things in cooperative mall are less than the normal price in the market. Suppose uh, if they are buying uh, some farm products in 100 Korean ones, when it is sold to the consumers it will be around 130 Korean won or uh, 150 Korean won means 30 to 50 percent increase in the price. The cooperatives are modern from the computerized billing to the professional dealing with customers. There are also sections where farmers sell their produce directly to the consumers. Like this man selling peers who left his job to help his farmer father. I'm a farmer but previously I worked for a company with the AV system or uh, yeah, special equipment. But now I'm farming. It's a good place to sell the uh, uh, products yeah. and the service or the uh, yeah, it's a good place to sell this product. Yeah, the local office um, help us to make this place. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But okay. so I didn't pay any any. Money, right. Mr. Yi Suk is happy to sell through the cooperative network. She has chilies, potato, and green leaves that she has brought for sale. Now we reach the sweet section. Here, most of the sweets are made of rice, like this rice cake that can be stored in a freezer for more than a month and is served on auspicious occasions. For Koreans, eating rice is very important. So we make a sweet with the rice. It's called the rice cake. And also rice cake, why it is important is not just the daily sweets for Koreans. In our culture, tradition, it's very important to ancestor, worship our ancestors. So when we have a worshiping ceremony for our ancestors, we use rice cakes. Uh, the sweets to show our appreciation. If you can keep it in the freezer, you can keep it for a long time and then you can put it in the microwave to defrost. It's not expensive. Uh, let's say like uh, in Korean won, 10,000 won, so like uh, five, ten dollars. The cooperative has 1,200 collection centers in zonal branches across South Korea. 
Its chairman and members are elected for four years. We sell agricultural products collecting from a different area in Korea. All of the products collect is collected from agricultural cooperatives. Maybe 1,200 rural agricultural cooperatives. The story of the cooperatives is not complete yet. The South Korean cooperatives also have banks that are profitable. Board member Zhu Sen Lee is very active in providing cheap loans to farmers. Few years ago, farmers had difficulty in taking loans and they used to get loans at very high interest rates. NSCF established NH Bank with the help of the government. NH Bank provides facilities like mutual fund, savings account, and insurance scheme like any other general bank. Now farmers get loan easily. The main objective of NSCF is to increase the income of farmers and to work in the interest of farmers. The Korean cooperative banks provide farmers loans to buy equipment. They provide loans to farmers at low interest without too many hassles. The cooperative bank also pays depositors a little higher rate of interest. The South Korean cooperatives also express their interest in doing business with India. They also say they are keen to make Indian cooperative banks profitable and user-friendly, which could mean a huge boost to the Indian cooperatives and also the farm sector that lacks modern equipment. I have heard that farmers in India get loans at very high rates due to which they face difficulties in farming. Their crops are also not paid on time. India should have the same banking cooperative system as Korea. Korea can help India if India wants. National Agricultural Cooperative Federation role is very significant in Korea. South Korea has created a robust system to support its agriculture. One that not only fills the plate of the consumer with healthy and nutritious food, but also does not fail farmers to guarantee a good deal and keep them prosperous. So you saw the story of Korean villages. That is quite interesting because the way Korean industrial development has taken place